Hello everybody. This is my short talk about the planet Saturn and its moons and we start of course with a fabulous image from the Cassini mission of Saturn there, the planet with its rings around it showing the belts on the planet and the uh, structure within the rings. We've got lots and lots of individual particles all orbiting around independently and they form these very very thin flat rings and there are one or two gaps in the rings and those are down to disturbance by the moons of uh, the planets which uh, have a gravitational influence that prevents particles orbiting at certain distances from the planet this is more the sort of image that you'll see from a small telescope i took this one myself with a 10 inch reflector using just a webcam to capture the images, create a video, and then take the best frames from that video and combine them to make one image. And you can see that at the time, the plane of the rings of Saturn was fairly flat, almost edge on to us. They vary depending on the uh, position of Saturn and the position of the Earth around their orbits. They can become very wide, almost to the point where you, you can see the rings either above and below the poles of the planet and sometimes they go completely edge on and disappear but here you can just about see them you can just about make out that gap in the rings either side there and one or two of the colored belts on the planet and that's roughly what it will look like to uh, uh, somebody with a powerful telescope at home through the the eyepiece as well of course spacecraft and uh, really powerful telescopes can produce these magnificent uh, views that we see here and just one or two basic facts for you saturn orbits 9.5 times further from the sun than we do 9.5 astronomical units an au an astronomical unit is the earth sun distance and takes just under 30 years to do so 29 and a half the planet body itself is eight and a half times that of the Earth, which means you could drop 750 Earths inside it, but its mass is very much less than you might expect. It's only 95 times the mass of the Earth, and that makes it less dense than water on average. So they say if you could find a bath large enough, you could make the planet float. Now here's a picture taken from the Cassini spacecraft that plunged into the planet in, in September of 2017 at the end of its mission as it was diving in it took some close-up shots and you can see these amazing whirls and the wavy patterns along the edges of the different bands of colour on uh, Saturn's outer atmosphere there. Of course Saturn is a gas giant planet and so we can only really see what's going on in the cloud tops. Here's another picture. It flew over the pole of Saturn. You can see the blue banding at the top there is, is an oblique view of some of the rings. But here we have the north pole of Saturn, and it's the polar hexagon. Uh, a weird consequence of the equations of turbulence creates the possibility that when you have a swirling ring around the central pole of a planet like this, it can divide up and create. Uh, a number of substorms and subregions that create a sort of uh, polygon shape and in particular a hexagon is quite a nice stable shape for it. Here's another view of that uh, in black and white at the top and a couple of little animated views at the bottom there that are just showing that it's moving and changing all of the time. Now, rather like Jupiter, we think that Saturn has a fairly solid core deep down inside and perhaps an inner temperature there of 25,000 degrees. And overlaying that, again, a high pressure zone, high pressure, high temperature, compressing the hydrogen that it's made of into a liquid metal. The uh, atoms are so closely crushed together that their electrons orbits overlap and the electrons can then flow freely around inside the liquid and uh, that makes it electrically conducting. And overlaying that, once you get to the outer layers where the pressure and temperature are lower, then you've got ordinary hydrogen gas. Um, it's mixed in with helium, it's mixed in with other organic compounds, ammonia, methane, ethane and so on. And as this diagram shows, it's also got quite a strong magnetic field 
as a consequence of the churning of that liquid metal hydrogen core. So the solar wind comes in from the sun and interacts with that magnetic field and distorts it creating a, a bow shock at the front there and leaving a long tail out behind Saturn away from the sun. And there's just marked there the orbit of uh, the moon Titan which is just about sitting in the bow shock not a particularly comfortable place to be but it's just inside the protective layers of uh, uh, the beginnings of Saturn's magnetic field. That magnetic field can lead to some spectacular aurora, the northern and southern lights that we have on the earth caused by the solar wind impacting the atmosphere and the solar wind strong enough even out here at Saturn to interact with its magnetic field and create these light shows as shown here in the picture. Now the Cassini space mission did a special maneuver and created an eclipse for itself. It went round behind the planet Saturn so the Sun is completely blocked out and that really amazing illumination angle has given us this marvellous picture of the rings of Saturn and quite a lot of the moons are labelled there. Over to the left we have Enceladus but just in the picture just here we have the Earth and its moon and up here we have Mars. Now they told us here on Earth that they were doing this and they called for everyone in the entire population of the Earth to turn their faces up to the sky and smile. So this is a photograph of the whole population of the Earth in one pixel there and it's called the day the Earth smiled. There are some other fantastic pictures of uh, the backlit ring structure there again of uh, Saturn and uh, the dusty outer rings showing there as well as the more prominent inner ones. You can really see the banded structure of them. And that banded structure is, as I said, controlled by the moons. Here on the right we've got two little moons, just small potato shaped uh, objects, 84 and 102 kilometres in diameter, but they are shepherding a, a set of rings between them. They've got these uh, ring particles trapped between the gravity of Saturn and the interactions of the gravity of these two little moons that orbit around. And they're creating that banded wavy structure on the innermost ring there and keeping all those ring particles trapped. And you can also see on the left hand picture it looks like there is a small moon beginning to form right on the outer edge of one of the rings there whereas a little blob of material beginning to gather itself together so maybe that's the birth of a new small ring moon. But aside from the little tiny moons Saturn has a fantastic array of interesting moons that are well worth taking a look at in their own right. We've got an array of them illustrated around here. They're the, they're right scale for themselves. Saturn obviously is made to be more distant in this picture and, and therefore smaller and further away but uh, it shows the relative sizes with Titan being the largest of the family of moons and that's about the same size as the planet Mercury. It's 5,150 kilometers in diameter. If it orbited the Sun we'd call it a planet. You can see it was discovered shortly after uh, the invention of the telescope at 1655 here and uh, Christian Huygens was the uh, first man to notice it. All we see from Earth and with our telescopes is this orange smog that fills Titan's atmosphere. The atmosphere is uh, actually one and a half times as thick as our own, mostly made of nitrogen but it contains methane and lots of other organic compounds Again, some of these tholins, these complicated organic compounds made by interaction between ultraviolet light and the more simple chemicals. Now for a long time we weren't sure about the temperature. We thought that this atmosphere might result in a greenhouse effect and trap quite a lot of heat inside Titan down to the surface. But we now know that the temperature on the surface is minus 160 degrees C. So any water that's down there is frozen solid, hard as iron in the form of ice and uh, takes the place of a lot of the mountain building regions. Uh, a lot of mountains are built up of ice on Titan. And of course we do that because we parachuted down a little probe called Huygens 
down through the atmosphere. The top left hand picture shows the atmosphere with an infrared camera from the Cassini spacecraft and it's just beginning to see through that haze. The top left picture though shows the mountains and the valleys between them with what looked like river channels carved out in them as the uh, Huygens probe was parachuting down and then the bottom right picture is the pebble covered orange smog uh, illuminated beach that it landed on. It's either a dried up river bank or a, uh, a, bit, a beach of a lake there that it's landed in. And the picture on the left lower is the Kraken Mare, an actual lake on Titan, but it's not a lake of water. It's made of liquid methane. At minus 180 degrees C, methane that we have as natural gas and we cook with and heat our homes is in the form of a liquid and can form these lakes and you can even see river channels leading down into the lake there from various directions and so we definitely know that there's weather with these clouds of methane raining and snowing out methane ice and methane liquid which is carving out the river channels and flowing into these lakes we've even seen seasonal changes with the lakes filling and receding here's another couple of images of the some river channels and even another small lake there at the top right hand side. Here we have clouds on Titan and we can see that they've moved and even see that the ringed area there, uh, some marshy boggy areas have dried out between the right hand picture and the left hand picture and the lake Ontario Lacus has uh, definitely almost completely dried out between the two. And again here's Kraken Mare and we've got a little bit of the uh, land there cut out in the insert area onto the left hand side and you can see as we've taken pictures of it at different flybys at different uh, years from 2007 to 2015 the land shape has changed but it is because the level of liquid in the ocean in the lake there is going up and down. More views of clouds on Titan high in its atmosphere and looking down through them with infrared, seeing some of those smaller lakes there. So that's Titan. The next largest moon of Titan is Rhea. And uh, it's the ninth largest in the whole solar system, 1500 kilometers in diameter. And it probably has its own ring system. So not only does Saturn have rings, but Rhea, moon of Saturn, has rings as well. And a thin atmosphere of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and again, a low temperature, minus 174. The rings were discovered by looking at uh, the passage of a star going behind the uh, direction that uh, we were looking at Rhea and seeing the drop in the light. You can see the light curve plotted there and some dips in the light curve outside of where the diameter of the main planet was and that's indicating that those rings were blocking some of the light from behind. It's also got two very different surfaces. It points one side at Saturn all the time and therefore spins on its axis at the same rate that it rotates around the main planet. And that means it has a leading edge and a trailing edge as it goes along its orbit. And the trailing edge is covered in these dirty organic tholins again, these organic materials that are a signpost to possible hints of uh, maybe some sort of biochemistry going on. We've so got some amazing ice cliffs and these are again hinting towards the possibility of internal water oceans on this moon uh, underneath the protective layer of the ice there and kept warm by radioactive elements trapped in the core and the possible tidal interactions between this moon and others. Next largest, a little bit smaller, is Dione, come ranks 15th in the solar system and just over 1100 kilometers in diameter. Again, another ocean world. Underneath the ice here, we have a trapped liquid water ocean, perhaps 100 kilometers deep, that's uh, warm enough not to freeze. And we can see on its trailing edge, again, more of those uh, dirty brown organic tholins that appear to have emerged up through some cracks in the crust. 
So maybe the crust is quite thin there. Perhaps there was an impact. We don't know. We need to study this in more detail. The star of the show, though, for the Cassini mission was the moon Enceladus and this magnificent image which shows an ice moon with a few craters up there at the top and what looks like an ice sheet with the blue cracks in it. They called these the tiger stripes for some reason. Tigers aren't blue, but never mind. And when we looked back, those tiger stripe cracks are emitting water, venting out into space. There's a good backlit image and another image here of Enceladus venting water into space. They flew the spacecraft through these plumes and were able to detect organic ma rich material, hydrogen gas, all sorts of interesting chemistry, which all point again to possible biological activity down inside that liquid ocean in the protected biosphere underneath the ice. And here's a kind of cutaway view of Enceladus. We think that southern ocean there where it's venting water to space is uh, perhaps doesn't cover the whole of the uh, the little moon but it might just be a very large uh, ocean on one side. Saturn's moons continue to amaze me when we look at this one this is Iapetus it's got again a light face covered in white frosty material that's picked up from uh, particles escaping from Saturn's rings and then a big ridge that runs around the center there that looks like where two halves of a coconut have been joined together. Here's a close-up uh, image of that equatorial ridge. And there are about four or five different theories about why this ridge might be there. It might be a collapsed ring, it might be a result of shrinkage of the moon, there are all sorts of ideas, but we really don't know. And then on some of the uh, icy patches they have this amazing black material deposited on the surface. Carbon rich, we know that, but what it quite is, we're still needing to investigate more. So I think another mission to Saturn is definitely called for. Now these pair of moons here, well, they were originally called Janus and uh, discovered in 1966, but it turns out that there are in fact two moons, Janus and Epimetheus we call them, and they're co-orbital, they share the same orbit. And what happens is that one catches up with the other one because it's in a very slightly lower orbit and then they do a gravitational uh, tug of war and a quick swap and they swap orbits with each other and the uh, lower one goes into the higher orbit, the higher one into the lower orbit and then gets uh, they separate again because uh, the one in the lower orbit is in front and it uh, moves faster there so it goes round till it catches up again and then they have another interaction and swap positions so you can see in this diagram they're they're doing these weird horseshoe maneuvers relative to each other and uh, keep swapping positions quite strange but this did confuse people for a long time another rather nice little moon of uh, Saturn is Mimas quite a small moon with a whopping great crater on it if this crater from an impact had been much larger, it might actually have destroyed Mimas. But, uh, well, just for a piece of fun, they say maybe actually it looks like this. Hyperion, which is covered in these uh, amazing vents that look like it's made out of bath salts or something. And this could be because it's a captured comet and it previously has been venting material to create a cometary tail before coming too close to Saturn and being captured. And this is a little icy Phoebe with these amazing ice cliffs on it. So again there are lots more to look at in terms of uh, the science and understanding all of these amazing moons around Saturn. It's not just all about Saturn and its rings. So thank you very much. I will uh, bring this session to a close now. And the next one in this series will be the ice giants, Uranus and Neptune.